In this Takeinter tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to create our own custom virtual events in Takeinter. Takeinter has a pretty great event system that is enough for almost all use cases, but sometimes we may want a little more control and a little more customizability, which is where creating your own events come, you know, comes into. And Takeinter provides us with the functionality to actually easily create and bind functions to these virtual events of ours. Okay, that's pretty cool. So let's begin. I'm going to create a, using this event add function. All right, you can call this function on any widget in Takeinter that you want to add that event to. Like there's a button that you want to ever add this event to, or there's a label that you want to add this event to, or maybe you want to add this event to the entire application, in which case you're, you're going to add it to root, or you can add it to a specific window by calling it on that top level window or for a specific frame. Okay, this function is callable on any Takeinter widget. Now the first parameter here is the name of your virtual function, the name that you want to that you want to give it. All right. Now you need to keep this format in mind. There needs to be this crocodile tears that surround your uh, the string. Okay. So let's call it custom event. All right. Now we need to actually define how this event occurs. For example, button three. This says that whenever the right the right button is clicked, the right mouse button, then this event will trigger. Okay. Now I'm gonna define a function. Okay. Step one is to define the event. Step two, define the function. Step three, bind the function to the event. All right. So I'm going to define a function that's called hello world. And all it does is prints out hello world. And I'm also going to mention an event parameter in here. And I'm also going to print it out because I know that an event object is going to be passed. Okay. This is common with all events. All events get an event object automatically passed with information about the event which event it was and where it occurred. Okay. So now we do, now what we do is bind this. Okay. The first thing that comes here is the name of the event, which is custom event. Okay. And the next one is the function, which is hello world. Now, if I run this code, we'll get a take into our window right here. Okay. And if I right click on it, it's going to print out hello world and the event object. And you can see if I keep clicking in different locations that it prints out an event object that has the coordinates. Okay. The coordinates of where the event occurred, which is very useful information. There's also the num is equal to three, which means that it's the third uh, button in the mouse. That's how it works. You know, the first button is the left button, second is the middle, and the third one is the right one. Okay. Now, another useful thing that we can do is actually specify multiple events that can trigger this, this custom event of ours. We can say key press A. All right. And every time I click the A, if I click capital A, then it's going to print out this event. Okay. And this time the event object is different. Okay. There, uh, all right. A let's press the key code, Unicode uh, code. That's the Unicode, you know, integer number. Then there's the character itself and then the location at where it occurred. Okay. And we can also just do this, I believe. And if I click anything, it's going to trigger. Okay. I clicked H, I clicked F It's now printing out over there. And S, F, C, yep. So that's pretty cool, right? This is how you can create your own custom virtual events. Now, what you can do is also delete an event, just in case. Event delete. Now, you, uh, should I be, be binding it over here? Okay, hold on. Let me just do that, all right? And what we'll do is cr create this function, just change the name, and we'll call it remove event. Okay. And its goal is going to be to remove this event. Okay. So basically we're going to trigger the event. It's going to call this function once and the function will print out hello world. 
but then after that we're gonna we're gonna remove the event so that you know we can only ever call this function once this is actually something that realistically is needed sometimes you only want an event to trigger for the first time so so then you disable it after the after it's occurred once okay so i'm gonna just copy paste this over here and if i just change this to event delete then that's all we need to do actually if i click this run button and now if i right click over here it prints out hello world but if i right click again it's not printing out anything because the event has now been deleted let's run this code again but this time i'm going to remove the key press from here let's see what happens okay now if i click on you know the left sorry the right mouse click button okay now i'm clicking on it again it's not printing out hello world Okay, it only prints it out once. But if I click the keyboard keys, it prints out hello world. See, I'm clicking them right now. That's because we only deleted this event. Okay, we only deleted custom event from occurring if this button was pressed. It can still occur for this one. It can still occur if you click a key. If you want to completely delete an event, you need to specify all of its, you know, triggers. And I'm not sure what's gonna happen if you just do this. Let me see. Okay, this can also delete an event completely. If you just specify the, the name of the event, it'll delete it completely. Okay, so I guess both approaches work. So that's something new I learned today. And that's about it. That's all I really wanted to tell you guys in today's video. There's also some additional content I have on events and how you can use them different types of events and a list of all events in Takeinter. I'll leave all relevant video and uh, website links in the description below. All right. See you guys in the next video.